All right, so we are back once again at uh, Forest Park uh, um, Specialized Hospital here in Lusaka. And our main area of uh, interest today is uh, to talk to a neurosurgeon, uh, a neurosurgeon, exactly. And our discussion is based on spine and backache problems. They are quite similar. So in this particular episode, and perhaps the one to come, we are going to discuss spine problems and back problems, what you need to know about this particular issue. In Zambia, it's becoming quite a very, very common problem, and that's the reason why we thought on our health talk today, we get to discuss that. And Dr. Marian is actually my guest on the program today. Doc, thank you so much for allowing us to see you today. Thank you. You're welcome anytime. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, first things first, um, what causes, or maybe to start with, what is spine problem? Okay, uh, we have to know first that the spine problem is um, a very common problem that makes uh, us uh, rush to a doctor to know his opinion about this. Mm -hmm. It's very common because of um, our lifestyle because uh, sometimes usually in our work we sit for a long time or we stand for a long time sometimes we are hard workers so we are farming or we are carrying heavy objects sometimes uh, we are not and most of the time we are not exercising all of this will uh, cause uh, some harm to our spine either our upper spine in the neck or the lower spine in the lower back okay yes so it's mainly a lifestyle problem. Okay, it's yes. a lifestyle problem. Yes. Okay. You've talked about uh, the spine being in two different angles. Is that right? Up and yes. lower? Yeah. Okay. Can they be affected at the same time or perhaps the problems come at different times? Um, the more common is the lower spine. Okay. But they can be affected at the same set. Maybe okay. the same patient come to you with a neck pain, upper back pain, lower back pain, the same set because of the same lifestyle. Okay. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. And when we are talking about the spine problem, does it have edge limit or it can affect all edge groups? Yeah. Um, for the most common problems, it mostly affects the middle age. But we have to know that there is part of the spine problem is congenital, like scoliosis or whatever. It may affect the very young children. Mm -hmm. And it may be presented to us in a very uh, young age. But the most common presentation for most uh, common problems of our spine, it's the middle age because this is, uh, you know, the they are the most hard workers, the middle age. Okay. Yes. Interesting. Mm. Is it an inherited problem? Um, there is a lot of causes uh, of spine problems. Uh, part of it, like scoliosis, it's of course part of it is inherited. And uh, there are some inflammatory diseases also, like ankylosing spondylitis or, or whatever, it may be also inherited. You will have a family history of certain disease. But the, the, the main category of a spine problem, it's a lifestyle problem. Okay. So part of it is uh, inherited. It's, uh, it may be related to your father or mother. And you will find that they are suffering from certain disease, so you will suffer Sometimes you will suffer from the same problem, but the main category of the spine problem will be related to your lifestyle, related to your work. Exactly. Yes. I've heard a number of uh, you know uh, myths. I don't know whether I can quantify them as truth today. That sometimes a spine can be broken. How possible is that? That a spine can be broken. It's of course it's possible, and um, I have seen a lot, seen it a lot of times, uh, and it mostly happen with big accidents. Um, sometimes we have fracture um, in the neck, and most of it it will be fatal. Uh, sometimes and mostly in accidents, the most common is uh, the middle back fracture, 
Sometimes it happens in the lower back, but the most common the middle back fracture. According to the degree of the accident, if it was severe, moderate, or mild, you will have the your spine affected. Sometimes it only use it only need just resting in the bed, and may need up to surgical interference, fixation, and decompression of the spine. But it's common problem, especially uh, in osteoporotic patients, especially female in menopause age, and if. Of course, if there is a big accident, you will suffer from spine fracture. You may. Yes. What are some of the symptoms and signs that one is developing a spine problem? Okay. Uh, the main presentation in the spine uh, problem is either neck pain or back pain. You are mostly complaining uh, of pain in your neck and maybe radiating to the shoulder. Sometimes it goes to your arms. Or you may be complaining of lower back pain and sometimes it also radiates to your leg. But the main presentation is discomfort or pain on the neck or the back. Sometimes you complain of hand or leg pain. Yeah. So how severe uh, is that pain for somebody to have an idea mm. that perhaps this pain is as a result of spine or back problem? Um, let's talk more about the types of back pain this will guide us in your question mm -hmm. um, there is two types of uh, back pain one is mechanical back pain and the other is pathological back pain mechanical back pain and this is the most common type of back pain and this is we can say as if it is a normal experience most of us will have this problem Exper experiencing uh, for a while back pain or neck pain and after a while if you rest or if you just um, uh, change your posture change your position at that time you will feel that the neck or your back is totally relieved this is called the mechanical mechanical means that uh, your muscles you know our spine is a bony part mm -hmm. the bony part in our back it's through our back and surrounded all around with muscles mostly the most common part to be affected is the muscles okay once as i'm telling you if we have um, unhealthy lifestyle this muscle start to have some sort of inflammation at that time we will start to have this back pain once we rest once we changed our lifestyle once we changed our position uh, we will start to feel that this mechanical back pain is relieved but there is another type of back pain which is pathological which is more serious when we have this back pain which is severe and we have an accompanied symptoms like what like as i'm telling you we have some pain radiating to our arm at that time this means that there is something compressing on our nerves at that time this is something serious you have to go to, to your doctor we may have some numbness on the hands some numbness on your legs at that time this is serious you may have some heaviness in um, in your hands or some heaviness in your legs so this is serious you may have some problem with uh, bladder control like urgency or whatever, at that time you need to consult your doctor. Uh, and if you are having back pain with a history of cancer, at that time this is very serious, you know, you, you must go and consult your doctor about this. So there is mechanical back pain, which most of us will experience. It's more related to our uh, work, more related to our um, lifestyle and this is mostly as benign and will disappear with just resting and the other type which is pathological when we you have back pain accompanied with other symptoms at, the, at that time you must consider visiting your doctor yes how serious could you know the spine problem be um of course it's very serious because once we are talking about our spine either our neck or our back at that time we means that uh, we are talking about how we are going to move because sometimes um, we have a back pain and we don't put it on our, our mind no i will continue after a while we are having severe pain after a while we are bedridden we can't move 
so it's very serious once you are having constant back pain once you are having any uh, pain in your arms or in your legs once you are having numbness once you are having inability to control your bladder at that time it's very serious to consult your doctor if you didn't do this in the early uh, period at that time you will regret not doing this because after a while you will find that you are having difficulty in moving either your hands or your legs and um, unfortunately our nervous system either our brain or spinal cord it's not regenerating like if you have a cut in your skin after a while it will be totally healed after a while but our nervous system once our nerve is affected and start to be not working we cannot regenerate it it will be uh, permanently affected Yes. All right, so we are discussing the issue of um, spine problem and we're also looking at uh, back problems as well. Dr. Marianne from um, Forest Park Specialist Hospital here in Lusaka is my guest trying to help us understand how this problem can actually affect our whole humanity. And one of the key issues that she actually pointed out was the fact that, you know, it's mostly a lifestyle problem maybe your job requires that you sit a lot or you stand a lot or maybe you do a lot of you know labor related work like you know you work too much in the field and you do a lot of you know uh, manual work and all that and you only have little time to rest you might be at risk of perhaps having this particular problem to those who are just joining us definitely this is our topic of discussion all right so now doc um are there any other body parts that could be affected by um, a spine problem? Yes, because uh, you know, our brain is the center where, which is controlling movement and sensation. And there is nerves coming from the brain going down through our spine. This nervous is going down in a levels. Part of it is controlling arm movement, hand movement. Part of it is controlling uh, leg movement. Part of it is controlling um, urination and defecation, stool and the urine. Part of it is controlling the sensation. So once part of our spine is affected, you will have affection in either one of these. Either sensation or movement, either bladder control, stool control, according to the part which is affected. Yes, of course. <laughs> when, when you look at, you know, the makeup of, of the spine, yeah. um, like you said, it's usually made up of, you know... Uh, Vertebrae. Exactly, yes. and uh, there's some sort of Disc. cartridges, yes. discs. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, when there is disc dislocation, yes. are there any possibilities that, you know, that disc can be put back in, into its place and that person will be able to move properly? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you have to know that the disc prolapse, it's more accurate than dislocation. Disc prolapse is um, a very common problem. And the, sometimes the presenting symptom is just complaining of back pain. After a while, you may complain of either brachialgia or arm pain or sciatica or leg pain. Um, when you are complaining of either brachialgia or sciatica, at that time, I think your doctor will ask for a scan it's called an MRI scan to investigate if there is something seriously compressing on your nerve if there is a mild bulge or mild degree of compression on the nerve your doctor may try at first to give you uh, a chance with conservative treatment like he will give you very few instruction the main uh, item of this instruction is changing your lifestyle the second thing he may give you some medication he may tell you about some physiotherapy some patient and most of them we can say that they improve if they follow the instruction and do physiotherapy and receive uh, some medication most of them will improve but another category if they just forget about the instruction no i'll continue the same lifestyle i'll continue carrying heavy object and continue hard working at that time the small disc bulge will be a bigger disc bulge at that time the only option will be surgery yes mm. If at all somebody has got an injury uh, at the upper side of the spine, yeah. are there any way the brain is affected? In the upper spine? Exactly. No. In the upper spine, the part which is affected your spinal cord. Okay. 
at that time, if it's a severe injury, you may have weakness in your arms and your legs. You may have have problem with breathing. Okay. Uh, it's also controlling all your body. Okay. But the brain, it's another problem. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a bigger problem. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. So the, the, definitely, the brain yes. remains intact. It's different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, totally okay. different. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Mm. Interesting. In your line of work. Uh, here in Zambia and of course elsewhere where you have worked. Yes. Uh, at what stage? Mm. Uh, what are the main causes of most spine problems and who do they really affect so much between men and women? Um, in Zambia, the most uh, common cause uh, of spine problem in Zambia, I have seen it was hard working, okay. carrying heavy object, uh, a lot of farming. You know, this this uh, this things is the main cause. Okay. Most of the patient uh, which needs operation, most of them is from this category, hard workers. Okay. Um, the second thing is. Uh, so, you know, cancer mm -hmm. sometimes send the metastasis, cause metastasis to other parts in our body. And um, I have seen a lot of prostate cancer patients uh, having back pain, and unfortunately, the prostate cancer send the metastasis to the spine, caused uh, some compression on the spine. At that time, they presented with weakness on their legs. So, this is the second common cause, and of course, inflammation, infection like TB. Uh, I have seen a lot of patients with TB presented with back pain, and after that, uh, this inflammation causes compression on their nerves, so the problem is getting increased. So I think the most common cause is hard working. The second thing was was cancer patient metastasis. The third thing was infection and the inflammation. This was the most common causes. Okay. Yeah, I have seen here in Zambia. Okay. In Zambia. All right. Okay, yeah. and when 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 you receive such a case, somebody comes with you know a back problem, how is the diagnosis done? Uh, first of all, according to the complaint of the patient and according to the examination, I may tell him it's only muscular pain. As I told you, it's only mechanical pain that needs rest, that needs changing of lifestyle. Or according to the examination, I can find that, it, no, it's a more serious problem. No, we will need more investigation. Usually we start with an X-ray or if I find it that it's very serious at that time, we will start with an MRI scan. So according to the examination of the patient, it's either two categories. Either just you need rest, you need very few days off and you need change lifestyle. And the second category is, no, we have to take it more serious. We will start with doing some scans. Okay. Yes. So once you have back pain, just put it in your mind that it may be something serious. Okay. So you need to consult your doctor to okay. be sure that you are doing correct treatment. Yes. Okay. All right. So key points. Backache problems in Zambia are usually caused by, you know, largely hard work, the kind of manual work that we usually do. It could be farming, it could be mining, or it could be that you sit a lot or you stand a lot. Once you, ha you begin experiencing backache challenges, make sure that you report that to your doctor. Let your doctor do um, a, a clinical diagnosis so that they can ascertain as to where the problem is and perhaps be able to work around that particular issue as well. Pain could be in two different forms, as Dr. Marianne has explained, so you have to know all that. In our next episode, we're going to look at once the diagnosis is done, what is next? Are there any treatments available here in Zambia for backache problems? What is, and what is that treatment? What is required? And if somebody is put on treatment, can they get back to their normal day-to-day -day life? And on top of that, how can you prevent backache problems? Those are some of the questions that Dr. Marianne is going to address in the next episode.